got half that far. <laughs> Falling through the ice is common in Maine. So is dying from it. The shock of the cold water makes you gasp. Swallowing it makes you choke or panic. If you can't get out quickly, you begin to freeze. Your flesh hardens. Your blood thickens. Your arms and legs stiffen up. Hypothermia has set in. Bomb Center dispatching Auburn Engine 5, Engine 3, Ladder 1, and the rescue boat in its response for a person through the ice. When an ice call comes in, rescue crews from Auburn know the clock is ticking. They have little time to get to the scene, assess the situation, and find the safest way to get the victim out. Okay. In this mock rescue, I'm the victim. I'm passive, unable to move. In the water, the rescuer gets behind me. He secures a portion of his line around my waist, then eases me onto a sled. Once secured, he signals to the tenders on shore to pull us both to safety. A lot of pressure. A lot of pressure to get the job done, get it right, while keeping your people safe. We try to keep ourselves calm and walk instead of run. That's one of the ways to keep ourselves calm. If we're not under control, we can't do anything for the victim. So our first effort is to calm ourselves down and get it done right. Kick! Kick! Keep kicking! Getting the job done right means getting the victim out quickly, but gently. When the heart gets chilled, it gets irritable, and if you handle them roughly, you can cause them to have some really bad heart rhythms that can be fatal. At this mock rescue in Raymond, crews used an aluminum sled with floatable pontoons to get me out of the water. A firefighter put Velcro straps around my back and lifted me onto the board and out of the water. But getting the job done safely and successfully is a team effort. You have somebody on the sled, you have somebody tethering the sled, you have somebody that's tethered to a person, tethers to tethers, backup people, safety people downstream if you're in current. If crews can reach the scene in time, you'll probably survive. But many lakes and ponds in Maine are too remote. No one around for miles. No one to hear your screams. What can you do if you fall in? First, try not to panic. Turn back toward where you came from and try to get out fast. And the way to do that is almost a swimming motion. You've got to bring your feet up to the surface by kicking. You get your arms out on the ice and you want to stay low on the ice and crawl. <laughs> struggle like the military crawl. Then you'll have to do it and keep doing it because the ice will bend a little bit, make it a little hard to get away from the edge. This is not easy to do. The ice, covered with water, is extremely slippery. You're struggling with the weight of your clothes, and every minute you're in the water, your body becomes weaker. Safety experts will tell you your best bet is to carry ice picks, inexpensive little tools that drape around your neck. If you fall through, you can dig them into the ice and lift yourself out of the water. Distribute your weight and roll away from the hole. Still not easy, but you'll have a much better chance of getting out alive.